people ask me all the time if we're going to do this. You know, I'll tell them about our new game that we're going to make, and we're going to put it out on mobile, and we're going to put it out on phones, and everybody goes, yeah, 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 that's great. But when are you going to remake The Incredible Machine? Uh, I'm Jeff Tanell. I'm the managing partner and creative director at Spotkin. Uh, you probably know me better for I was the founder of Dynamics, where we made products like the Incredible Machine, Trophy Bass, Tribes, uh, Red Baron, Ace of Pacific. Um, in my career, I've made over 70 games. And we're here today to talk about Contraption Maker, which is the next game that Spotkin is making. Contraption Maker is the spiritual successor to the Incredible Machine, which is a game that we made back in the 1990s. The best way to describe it is it's a Rube Goldberg construction set where you try to do the simplest tasks in the hardest possible way. So we have a set of 50 or 60 parts, things like mouse motors and dynamite and conveyor belts and balls, and you put them all together and they interact in a physics type of way. The technical things have changed over time. With the much more powerful computers, we can create contraptions that, that um, are like 10,000 times as big as what we could have in the, in the um, original The Incredible Machine. Even just releasing Incredible Machine in high definition is already a vastly different game. You know, going from having a contraption that's this big to something that takes up a 1080p monitor is a huge difference. But that's not all we're gonna do. You know, we're obviously gonna, we're gonna add more parts and the editor is extremely powerful. You know, it's almost Photoshop-y in that you can take something that you built over here, copy-paste it into a new contraption and start something else. You know, you can have multiple things open at once and you can have layered backgrounds and change the opacity and change everything to really make your machines the way you want to make them. The Incredible Machine actually started a genre in, in games. It's called the physics puzzler. And in the 20 or so years since we released it, there have been a lot of competitors. Uh, but they just kind of seem to miss the mark. One of the big things that we were always looking for is the aha moment. You don't want to have to place these little parts on the screen and, and move them by the pixel. We call that pixel placement. We want to be able to solve the puzzle by finding this big aha. And when you find that, it's really fun. Your brain goes, ah. I journeyed up to Oregon about three years ago to work with these guys because I had seen that Jeff had just started a new company and I thought that there might be a possibility of working uh, with Jeff on uh, some type of game like The Incredible Machine. I had already uh, you know, built a game that was similar to The Incredible Machine on my own several years ago and published it with Garage Games, but I was really hoping that we might be making this very game that we're making today, so this is, this is the reason I came here. So coming up with a look for a contraption maker was probably one of the hardest problems I've ever worked on in my career, believe it or not, because the, uh, it invokes a lot of uh, feelings from the retro look, but the retro look looks way too dated in uh, modern day computer games. Uh, so a big part of the challenge was finding something that felt retro and felt uh, aesthetic and to that um, kind of goofy style that it was in, but looked great on modern technology. We tried 2D, we tried hand animated, but we eventually ended up doing um, a pseudo 3D process where we rendered out uh, sprites from 3D models and then touched them up by hand. I'll do something like animating a, a motor and all of the parts are kind of like jiggling, jiggle jiggle, and then like the exhaust pipe will be doing squash and stretch, like going, you know, and puffing out puffs of smoke, like that. And so I do that kind of thing. And then also, like the characters are all wacky and funny, and like the cat will kind of waddles around. It's like this fat orange cat. That's why I want to bring like emotion and humor and funniness. It's going to be a deep game that's got a lot of options. And so we're looking to, for the people that love to do things like build Legos and Lego robots, and we're looking for makers and DIY people that like to do Arduinos and Raspberry Pi, and uh, Minecraft users are gonna love this thing. It's a, it's a very open-ended sandbox type game on the, on the uh, maker side of it, and, and we're really excited about that. We have the internet now, but we didn't have the internet when we first started The Incredible Machine, so we're gonna be able to create great communities and sharing puzzles and, and making puzzles and having people create new things like 
create new new backdrops and new music and that kind of thing and bring it in and, and share it out with their in with their with the world. We're building a platform that will be expanded for years to come and I just can't wait to see the kinds of contraptions people make. You can have people all working on one contraption at the same time or you can have all these contraptions that are all linked together maybe to one central one so people are doing stuff. So you have a guy in Germany or a guy here and they're all being creative and we're, we've created this physics playground, critter playground, robot playground, whatever, where they're going to be able to make really cool stuff all working together, sharing stuff and then sharing it with family members or whoever. I mean, it's, it's uh, lots of possibilities.